Hello. I thought I'd start from uh, where I ended on the last video. Um, and that was basically where I was uh, comparing feed costs uh, for growing Cornish cross uh, chickens. And uh, just to remind you, I had uh, four different uh, suppliers. They're just basically stores that I um, surveyed their prices and you know how far away they were. Um, I typically have used just tractor supply and I purchased some things from Cherokee Feed and Seed also. But the uh, just to remind you, the total cost per Cornish cross, assuming a six pound chicken, would be, if I used this manufacturer, $6.70, but who I traditionally used was $8.52. And then uh, the cost per pound, you can see was $1.12 versus $1.42. So, anyways, this looks like uh, something I may uh, look into, but you know, I had really good success with the chickens using the tractor supply. So, what I've done uh, since the other day when I filmed this, I, w I now have done a complete process of how I did my chickens and uh, and uh, all the different materials, so you can see the NRE. And uh, so, let's go through that. All right, so the first thing you have to do is you have to buy chicks. And uh, I use um, tractorsupply.com. And uh, when you, all you do is uh, type in the search bar uh, chicks, and then you, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. And uh, if, you, if you want to do the meat broilers, you do the Cornish cross broilers. And then you, you have to select what you want. Do you want unsexed, which is a mix of male and female, or you select male or female. Now, there is a cost difference. If you buy the unsexed ones, they're $2 a piece. But if you buy the either male or female, um, you get uh, $2.50 a piece because you're buying you know 10 at a time. Um, I bought the unsexed because I wanted to see what the differences were and how they came out. and. Uh, so I've got some data at the end we'll go through and I'll show you uh, the difference. But uh, it's up to you what you would like to buy. A lot of the people that are doing mass quantities, they're doing the, uh, the males because they get a lot bigger, a lot faster, which means they probably eat more feed. So I don't know cost-wise whether it actually comes out better or not. But uh, I, I kind of think for me, because I'm just doing it for myself, the mix of unsexed, in this case males and females, is better for me because let's say I've got 20 or 30 chickens out there on the eighth week they come due, I've only got to do half of them. And so it's quite a, a big deal to kind of go through processing a bunch. So this way it allows me to uh, kind of split it up, then a week later then I do the other females, which will probably never catch up to the male size, but you know they'll be big enough uh, you know, a week later, so it just buys me some time. So that's something to think about. Um, now, I'm planning on doing two batches of 30 in the spring and in the fall. So the pricing that I have here when you get to feed is I've factored in uh, for a quantity of 60 because I'll probably buy all the feed at one time because it's going to be successive growing the way I plan to do this. Um, I have kind of an interesting process. I have a three-step process here and uh, this allows me to do some uh, batch processing. So anyways, the first thing that I do, and you know, you learn about this if you go to Tractor Supply, they use these 100 gallon stock tanks. They're basically two foot this way and then four foot that way, which is a nice compact design. And uh, on the website, they're listed as $99.99. And I think I got mine for $89. But uh, you know, you get one of these, you get uh, some pine shavings, you get a 250 watt heat lamp, but you'll also have to get uh, the bulbs. You have to get a waterer, a feeder. Actually, this is the feeder, that's the waterer. You gotta get a uh, chick starter, and then you gotta get these, uh, this grit. So I went ahead and put all the prices in here. So the heat lamp and one bulb is $15. Medicated feed is $45 for, again, this is for doing 60 chickens. And uh, you got to have a water and feeder that's 20 bucks. And the, I guess I didn't list the, uh, it's uh, $7 for the chick grit. But I mean, that'll last a long time. You only just sprinkle a little bit on their feed uh, when they're about a week or so old. 
Actually, I did put it down here in the second week. All right, so, so the idea is the first week, you know, you're going to have 20 or 30 of them in this container, but they are just real little. It's no big deal. But the second week, you've got to split them up. So you got to have a second tank. And I found that you can put, you know, 10 to 15 per tank, no problem. And so that means, uh, truthfully, I, I need to add another uh, water and feeder in this one. And that would, uh, so that adds another uh, 20 bucks. And you also have to have another heat lamp, so that's $15. So I'll come back and modify that. But uh, now I'm thinking about the process. You gotta have two of everything. And then the other thing is I have uh, some extra wire cloth that I laid on top because these things start to get a little jumpy flighty and this thing's only a couple feet tall. I don't think I've any had any ever get out, but by putting the wire on top, one, I got a couple dogs and they get a little nosy and so this kind of keeps them out of it. So that's something to think about it. But uh, the, as far as the process goes, you, you want to just basically check on them in the morning and the evening, you know, refresh their water, put fresh uh, additional feed in on top, you know. Um, every couple days you're gonna have to, you know, take the little chicks out, put them in a tote, and then go dump the container out and push, put fresh pine savings. You probably hose it out if it gets too bad, but uh, we just, uh, we notice when they first are in there, you don't have to do anything for maybe even four days. It's only when you get into the second week, every two or three days, you gotta change them out. You wanna keep it clean. And it depends on how cold it is as to, you know, how long you need to have the heat lamps. But uh, my basement where I put these guys in is was a little cool and uh, it, uh, you know, the heat lamp, I just put it way on one side and you will see whether they need it or not because they'll huddle over in that side but most of the time it gave them just adequate heat where they were comfortable. So this, once you get through week two, you're gonna then be transferring the chicks to another location but I put a note in here, at this point when you're transferring these over, you can go ahead and purchase your next batch of 30 chicks and it's because I have you know, three different uh, 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 call it storage locations where these things are growing. So during uh, week three and four, I actually have a dog kennel set up and inside it I've got one of these uh, chicken coops that I use for a nursery. And uh, so the dog kennel, I actually take the welded wire, put it all the way around, and uh, I just use tie wraps to kind of hold it on there, but it keeps all kinds of critters from getting in there. And then I also have a metal roof that I put on there, just used like two by fours and then a one by four, connecting those together and then screw the metal to the one by fours. Keep everything nice and dry and again, very secure. Um, so if it's cold outside, oh, and then I also put pine shavings, a whole bunch of pine shavings. It might take several bags to put pine shavings in that. And uh, if it's very cold, then I've got these reinforced tarps that I use. Uh, I got it right here from Tarps Plus. So you need uh, four of these, they're six by 20. Uh, actually, you only need, uh, you need two of them, but I have two dog kennels, you'll see that we got set up, so you're gonna need four of them. But anyways, um, let's see. At this point, you move to 24% protein feed. <clears throat> and these things really start eating at this point. So um, your little feeder, you may, when you're now combining them all together in this area, you're going to bring both your feeders and both your waters and set in there. And you may also need to, if it's cold, even though you have the tarps up to block the wind, you still may have to move your heat lamps out into this area. So I just go buy two more heat lamps and drop them in and plug them in if it, uh, it's going to be really cold. All right. And then again, I check them on a morning and evening and, you know, add more food, add more water. Um, and uh, they're, they're really kind of, they take care of themselves. They really don't have any problems at this point. So you do this for two more weeks. They're in that small area and they're, they grow up pretty dang quick. And uh, um, I've even got the pictures of every single thing on here so you can see what they look like. So then, weeks five to eight, I actually have a second um, 10 by 10 dog pen but I don't have the chicken coop in there. Um, I have the same metal roof and I have the welded wire around the exterior. That they call it hardware cloth. And um, the same tarps. 
heat lamps. But uh, another thing that I added is just because these things become such uh, pigs, I added a goat trough and it looks like this and they have them at uh, Tractor Supply for 20 bucks. The only thing is I screwed a uh, like a one by two across this way and then I, I, I have another one that I screwed uh, kind of standing up so that the chickens are less likely to stand in the feed while they're eating and that, that seemed to work real well. So now they kind of go around the whole outside. But I also have this 15 pound hanging feeder and then I also bought one of these five gallon waterers and then I used these uh, what does that say? Eight quart rubber feeder, so that's a gallon and a half. And I uh, use that for water as well. Now at this point, you switch to the 20% uh, protein feed. Uh, so you back down from the 24. Did I say uh, up here, I forgot to mention, you're supposed to remove the feed at night. So at the week three to four, that's when I start removing the feed at night. And so you only have 12 hours of feed during the day and then remove it at night, so 12 hours off. So the same thing happens here. So basically from uh, week three all the way through week eight, they only have 12 hours of feed on and 12 hours off. It's not catastrophic, you forget to take it away at one night. You just don't want them to grow too fast because they will outgrow their bone structure and it's just really hard on the bird. Um, so at this point, when you get to, uh, you know, the fourth or fifth week, I, I recommend you actually start weighing your birds. And this is uh, some of a rough estimate of what the birds uh, should weigh, you know, at these points. And uh, so today I went out there, I'm right at week eight on my 20 uh, birds that I have out there. And you can see that, uh, so week eight, we should be around eight pounds. And this is for roosters. So on my roosters, I actually have, you know, 7.8, 8, and 9.3. I probably have about 15, uh, 10 roosters, but it's really stressful trying to do this, and I didn't want to give them a heart attack, especially this one that was like 9 pounds. But you can see the hens was uh, right around 7 pounds. So here's your average, 8.3, 6.9. And the rough carcass weight, this gives you an idea of the the roosters are going to be near seven pound carcass and uh, five and a half pounds right now. So I'm trying to target six, so I'm probably going to go another week on my hens. But that gives me 101 pounds today. But, you know, if I was to process these, I'd end up with 84 pounds uh, total. And then this is the processed pounds. Uh, 185 pounds. Now, like I said, I'm probably going to bring this up another pound, so my total weight's going to be more than this. But uh, this is where I'm at right now. So this is, if, if I just said to heck with it tomorrow and I go process all of them, that's the way it is. It's not, it, I'm not trying to make money on this. This is for my own personal use. So anyways, the, uh, you know, you're going to need uh, 21 bags of this protein feed and that's $342, but I, I called them today because I remember on the sign there is a discount and it kicks in at 20 bags so you can actually get a 5% discount and that will save you almost 20 bucks just on that feed. Now when you get to processing time, we'll say 8 to 8.5 eight and a half weeks, uh, and I'm talking about you know processing the roosters at this point, you're going to need some processing cones. So I went and bought two of these and uh, I'm just going to tell you right now, I bought the, uh, the large first and uh, they weren't big enough. So I had to actually buy the extra large, especially when you're doing these roosters. These things are, you know, closer to the size of turkeys. And then you need a, a chicken deplucker. Uh, you don't have to, you can do it by hand, but boy, this, this saves a lot of time. You can look at some other videos, but these things, it's about 10 seconds. And then you need poultry shrink bags. And I just remember, you also have to have a bayou cooker. I gotta come back and put that on here, but the bayou cooker was probably 30 bucks at Home Depot. And I think it even comes with a pot. And then you need a, uh, a thermometer to stick in the water so that you get that up to, uh, I think it was 140 degrees. And I got another video that describes that uh, whole process. Um, but anyways, um, so this, again, this gives me an opportunity to, you know, like this week I got 20 birds in there. So tomorrow I'm going to start processing the roosters and there's probably 10 of those. And then I've got next week I'll do the other 10 of the hens. So here's the total cost, the way it added up. So this is all the costs in this column going all the way up. And I got a few more things I got to add on there, but this still gives you a rough order of magnitude. It's about $3,000. And 
and then uh, that ends up with eight dollars a pound for your first 60 that are going through but after that your uh, your cost since you don't have to buy all this equipment again it ends up with a dollar 38 is uh, just buying from tractor supply and that's you know that's today's cost we don't know what tomorrow's going to be but uh, that's not a terrible uh, price difference and if we went back to this other page you could see that I could I could knock off uh, you know 30 cents uh, a pound by buying my feed somewhere else so that gets you down to a dollar eight a pound but uh, these chickens are they're wonderful I've ate my first couple the other day and uh, I, I really like them I think uh, I think they're great and now the funny thing is uh, we're taking eight weeks to get to this point I talked to one of the feed mills the other day and you'd be shocked at how fast um, the professional producers you know who are doing 10,000 chickens at a time or whatever they're now just a little bit over five weeks to get to the six pound birds so I was just kind of shocked that they cut off three weeks from uh, what we can do right now with um, you know buying from tractor supply or whatever but they they have this down to a science it just amazes me that they could get that quick but uh, so let me let me show you um, something how you can see this uh, having three different steps can save you time so what I've got is you know you start with those stock tanks and you have uh, 30 chicks and then these 30 chicks move over here um, split um, for two weeks you have 30 chicks but then you don't have anything in the nursery nothing in the dog pen and then at uh, week three to four these 30 chicks move down here and you notice we don't have any here now nor do we have anything here so this is like a process flow chart so then at this point week four you basically order your chicks and then by week five you get the chicks because let's say you order them on Thursday the week before by uh, the following Friday you'll have your chicks um, it could be Wednesday or Friday so it just depends when I ordered mine last time they were having all the blizzards up north and so it was delayed by a couple days but in any event you, you try to order them a week before you need them and then you get them um, so anyways these 30 chicks uh, sit here for two weeks you notice so this just moved over here and then uh, by white week five and six these move down but you'll have your new chicks here so then you move over here this one's still sitting up here for two weeks and then uh, this one is still here and then these move down and then if you wanted to order another set of chickens you follow what we did over here you skip a week and you say order them and then you, your next uh, 30 come in and uh, so then these eventually so right here I've got uh, I've got when you order these chicks this is when you're processing your roosters and then the following week you're processing your hens which is the same time these 30 are moving in and uh, so anyways you can see how this works this allows you by 13 weeks this allows you to have processed three groups of you know whatever quantity you want to buy but uh, you know I would say with the setup I have uh, 20 to 30 is the optimum quantity uh, to to use this kind of setup and so you know by the end of this uh, basically uh, let's see 12 that's three months by the end of three months you've had uh, you know whatever the yield of 90 chickens is and that's that's a pretty good uh, quantity to fill your freezer up and we also have you know rabbits we're doing at the same time so um, I think this is this is great for like a residential setup and uh, and it's not terribly expensive so I can do this now for years and years and years down the road um, so anyways uh, let me know what you think but this uh, I think this process has been just really successful and I'm going to just keep doing this and uh, keep learning but um, I think without doing anything else this will work consistently um, anyways uh, God bless I hope uh, I hope you learned something from it and uh, let me know if there's anything else that uh, you might like to see